Today, we're going to be talking about India, as you all, I hopefully all know. Um, and we have an awesome uh, host uh, joining us today to share her uh, advice and wisdom. Um, she's a local guide with uh, Urban Adventures, which is sort of an offshoot of Intrepid Travel, uh, our, one of our favorite uh, travel companies. They really have a focus on sort of local experiences, ethical, sustainable travel, which is really big for me. Uh, she also curates and leads her own uh, tours. She's been featured in media such as uh, the Hindustan Times. She teaches English and French uh, and has a knack for social media. She helps actually us run our social media. Uh, that's, I think that about covers most of it for now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to pass the floor over to you and you can uh, take it away. Okay, um, Christopher voice is breaking. I don't know what's happening. So I, I heard some words, but can you just ask everyone else if my voice is audible or not? Uh, can everyone oh, just... I, own... Yeah, your voice is breaking a little bit. Is, is my bros voice breaking, folks? Can we... Can everybody hear me okay? Let's start there. Okay. My voice is big. Should I um, rejoin? Can I do that? Uh, yeah, if you if you want to try rejoining, uh, we can do that, and then yeah, we can also try. Yeah. The, yeah. I I I come back. All right. Sorry, I'll hold guys. Down the I was gonna say I'll hold down the fort, but I've never been to India, so I'm probably the worst person to hold down the fort. Uh, <laughs> But maybe uh, type in the chat. Let's see how many folks here today have been to India already. Not including the folks who live there, of course. Okay. Too much. See, that's that's what that's the main reason I haven't been is because it, it seems, and I want to ask this question later, but it seems like one of those it, one of those places. You know, you're not just going to go there for a weekend, right? It's not a place like, you know, here in Europe, I can pop over to Berlin for two days and that's fine. But, you know, it's one of those places. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've heard people spend six months there and they're like, it wasn't enough. So it's like, how, how do I clear a year of my calendar? Maybe I can ask Matt, have a year off. I'm not sure he'll agree, but. Um, okay. Sangeeta. Three times, oh, lovely. Yeah, see, Heather, Heather makes a good point. I think that's what I'll probably end up doing. And probably what most people do is, is go for a, a sort of more reasonable period of time, but just focus on a single area. Because you can't exactly pop around the whole country in you know a week or two. John's been, so lots of people. That's awesome, that's great. Um, so sorry for the technical trouble. I think I'm bad luck. I hosted yesterday's event and we had technical troubles as well, are hosted. Uh, so I think, I, think it's, I think it's my fault. This is what happens when Erica goes on holidays. Thank you, Tracy, I, I appreciate the boost to my ego. Okay, did uh, I think let's see if this works here. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, is uh, is it audible, guys? Thank God, finally. Perfect. Uh, technical issues. Okay. Okay, Chris, you want to uh, say something or can I start? Uh, yeah, you, you dive in. Oh. We're, we're oh. all ready to go. I'm going to mute myself uh, and uh, it's all awesome. yours. Okay. Okay. Um, welcome, guys. Hi and a big namaste to everyone. So who knew that the Indian greeting of namaste would become the international jester? 
a gesture in uh, amidst this pandemic so it really has helped um also i really want to thank uh, chris for such a such a um, such an introduction with so many praises you're too kind um thank you uh, to nomadic network for giving me this platform and inviting me to present and uh, thank you erica i wish you were here you're not here to see it but chris is equally good and uh, thank you uh, nomadic mat for uh, creating this wonderful and incredible community of travel enthusiasts all over the world uh, i am extremely extremely excited to present today uh, it's this is um, a topic this is a theme which is extremely close to my heart it's going to be super fun interactive it's not going to be a lecture at all guys and i am not i i know i am from india but this is not a bashing lecture this is going to be very conversational and and like a dialogue so before i begin i am sanjita agarwal and i will be your speaker for today so now i am just going to share my screen um can you guys can everybody see my screen you can just give a thumbs up or something awesome just going to start my video okay so um today i'll be talking about the generalizations that we make about india so uh just a second All right. Can you guys all see the screen and uh, hear me? Okay. So um, today I'm going to be talking about generalizations about about India. And um, yes, the title was India: A Local Guide Will Break the Most Common Question. But that was to keep a surprise because it's going to be much in depth about what uh, you know about the generalizations, stereotypes, and assumptions we make about India. So. Um, India is one of those countries um you know which is in every traveler's bucket list and um also like it's considered to be a milestone and of course because it's so diverse everybody really needs to see India and one month is not enough because it's so diverse right so of course uh when something becomes famous it is thrown to assumptions misconceptions generalizations which sometimes may be true some which sometimes will be completely true which sometimes will be completely false and absurd and very funny and sometimes they will be half true you know so um before i begin there is a quote that i want to share um the quote is that it's often said about india that when something is true automatically assume that the opposite is also true so actually india as a country the nature of it is very dual there is a duality which increase uh, which exists in india so if there's something which is true the other thing is also true right so this is my humble attempt to uh, help all of us learn and unlearn and also bring a change this is my way to bring a change in perceptions about india and um, so that you know not just like even people who have traveled or um, who want to travel to india they are able to see the real india you know the real india with the right knowledge as well as fully appreciate the culture and you know the culture as well as the country as a whole 
uh, i'm just going to take a uh, one second thing and can you guys just tell me if i am still audible because i can feel that i am i my voice may be cracking okay thank you guys okay so moving on so i go by two names on instagram it's sajita for and talking frames uh, talking frames is my photography account i'm also a part time photography enthusiast so a little bit about me so you can get to know your speaker get to know about me before i uh, dive into the presentation so um, i'm a tour leader and an experienced curator uh some of it uh, chris has already spoken about so i actually have been working as a local guide with urban adventures which is part of uh, the intrepid group the largest uh, adventure travel company and sustainable rich experience travel uh, group as well as uh, i am an experienced curator so i do lead my independently i design my independently uh, independent tours as well as um, lead them so this i do in india and uh, my style of leading is all about connecting travelers to the heart of the destination and that is why this particular topic is very close to me and very personal so all the information that today you will be getting is going to be through the funny curious uh, amazing fascinating questions and statements i get to hear and people ask me all the time during my you know during my tour leading so it's been almost 4 years that i have been leading and it's just been an incredible incredible uh, journey i terribly miss it i terribly miss leading but uh, let's see if when tourism revives um i am also uh, very big on travel uh, traveling i think that's pretty obvious that we all are so uh, i actually um, got into traveling because of my father's profession so he works in merchant navy and i was only one when i took my first international trip i don't even remember it but uh, that's how i got into traveling and i've been an avid traveler since then and uh, in a normal year i would be traveling every other month uh, within india so because um, india is a uh, so diverse in its cultural geography landscapes people community you can never get sick of it so there's always something new that you will find i still haven't seen so much of india right so this actually is a picture uh, from the himalayas and it was taken in january almost 2 3 years ago and it was snowing heavily so this was on a trek yes it is india so most of the people are surprised to see that it snows in uh, india so yeah so i am very big on traveling and i have been to 20 plus countries till now and more to go um and i am a photography enthusiast as i told you before that i run a passion project on instagram by the name of talking frames uh, and i am inspired by people places um the culture anything which is colorful anything which is totally opposite so i love capturing my travels on talking frames as well as on my other accounts so you can check out the photos i love clicking anything which speaks okay so now uh, i'm going to be starting with the presentation so i would want to start uh, the first generalization that i'm going to dive into is one of my favorites so they these are all uh, every slide and every um, every slide would be either statements or questions that uh, i have heard from travelers from all over the world right so these are legit questions and statements that they have asked me or said to me and i haven't changed one thing about it okay so this is something that i've heard this is very common that i want to visit india just to see the taj mahal okay yes taj mahal is beautiful it is but as i have mentioned before also india is so so diverse it is um, it has so many different landscapes it has so many terrains and that's why i have put up all these pictures as the background these are all pictures that i have personally clicked 
and most of them you can find on the streams so you can see while we have mountains we also have beaches while we have uh, plains we have hills while we have snow we have uh, we also have deserts and we have lakes we have islands so the picture that you see right on top like the right above your blue circle is of marjoram which is an island in northeast northeast india is really really untapped even a lot of indians haven't been there uh, but slowly they are making it more uh, receptive to tourism and more um, better connection and everything so people are going there so that's something i would highly suggest then we have backwaters even in my even image this is kerala backwaters and uh, we have the most beautiful mountains and terraces so yeah so and besides that every part or every direction of india you go to the culture changes the history changes architecture changes and it's just beautiful that's why india is known as a subcontinent because uh, it's like a group of countries everywhere they're so different right and also a very fun fact uh, if you guys see on the left most there this red sandstone building this is actually one of my favorite monuments in india it um, is located in delhi my hometown um, and this is humayun's tomb right some of you may have visited who have come to india or even after coming to india some of you might not so humayun's tomb was actually the inspiration behind taj mahal right so taj mahal would have existed it wouldn't have become the symbol of india if we didn't have humayun's tomb so these are the obvious places that i would highly suggest when you come here plus uh, one more thing is that mostly we have this misconception that india is hot india is hot throughout that's not the case as i told you climate we have a lot of different climates we have a uh, different uh, weather conditions that keep changing now humidity we have heat we have extreme cold also even in cities like delhi it would surprise you but in delhi uh, in december uh, month we it's pretty cold right so yeah a lot of people come to india just for four days see the taj mahal and go so this is one thing that Uh, I'm just, just going to cut in. in. Yeah, your audio, your audio is cutting again. Um, maybe uh, do we want to try? If you just want to turn your uh, video off, that might help. Hello. Hello. Um, is it better now? No, it's still still cracking. Um, do, do you want to try keep your screen okay. shared? Uh, let's see if this helps. Yeah, is this fine? Uh, it's still cracking a little bit. It, I switched my video off. Uh, is it still cracking for for other folks? Hello. Yeah, it is still cracking. Yeah, uh, just it's a little. It is it's a little like better though. Okay. we can uh if you want to continue and then if 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 it starts to get worse folks just type in the chat and we can see what, see what we can do i'm so sorry about this guys uh, no no worries this i think we're all used to being Should on I zoom on my phone um Yeah, it's up to you. You can try rejoining again. That seemed to work a little bit. Just a second. Uh, Chris, can you un unmute me? I'm there from like come from my phone now, so. Uh, okay, let me just uh 
Uh, you joined from your phone. Let's see. You should be able to. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Of course, this happens as soon as I take over. I'm telling you, Erica's never going to go on holidays again. I think the moral of the story here, folks, is we're just going to have to go to India. We'll take a group trip. Yeah. Let me see if this happens when it was Zoom. The nice thing about doing these presentations for travelers is that they're so used to things going wrong on the road uh, that they don't mind small hiccups like this because they've probably been through far worse inconveniences. Is it better now by any chance? Uh, uh, keep talking. I think it was, it, it was cracking a little. Yeah, I, I will have your phones with the mic. Um, I'm getting them. Um, do you want to try rejoining? Otherwise, uh, you can send me the presentation and then you can just do the audio and I'll do the presentation, which is what, <laughs> what I did yesterday, actually. Uh, should I come from my phone? Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll rejoin. Okay, she's going to rejoin. Thank you, everybody. For those of you who have been to India, if you had to pick one place to visit or either to recommend or just your favorite place that you really like, uh, feel free to type that into the chat. So we can all at least uh, steal some ideas from one another. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a huge country. It's, I mean, it's, and fit probably a couple dozen European countries in there. Lots of good suggestions. Yeah, I, I had my eye on the north myself, but I heard the food in the south is really great. So that's that's a dilemma. Just gonna check and see if exactly. I mean, it's it's your. It's such a huge country, you're essentially, I mean, it, in a way, it's kind of like the states in a sense, because like so many states in the US, while similar, are incredibly different and the same, as far as I understand it, can be said for India. It's sort of 
a collection of mini countries. Oh, but now I'm getting hungry thinking of the food. Um, let's see if she's rejoined. Tons of great suggestions. I should actually, oh, I guess I'll have the recording so I can just write these down after. Hello. Hello. Yeah, is it audible now? Yeah, it's working for me. Is it working for everyone else? Yes, okay, finally. I'm here from my phone, so just give me a minute and I'm just gonna play the presentation. Awesome. Um, Uh, if you want, you can send me the email me the presentation. If that oh, yeah, helps. that's better. I'll do that just a second. Great. Oh, that's what you did yesterday, right? That's what I did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just a second. Right. Yeah, everyone's. I've heard good things, Sharon. And the pictures look awesome there, too. Let's see here. Uh, Chris, I've sent it to you. To see Great. To see. And let's give it a second here. Just waiting on the email, everyone. I just got it. Let me download it. And now let me open it. Again, thank you, everybody. Rolling with the punches here. Presentation, got it. And make sure it works. Okay, some of the fonts might not work apparently, but that's okay. I won't lose any sleep about that. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now, everybody. So let me know, just type into the chat. Can everyone see my screen? Where's the chat? Let me find the chat. Survey says, yes, awesome. Okay, we're rolling now. Uh, play from start. So where 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 are we? Uh, here? Uh, yeah, here? Just here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. And no thank problem. you so much, guys, for being so patient and understanding. Sorry for the hiccup. Okay. So yeah, you can actually move on to the next slide. So you guys can see the pictures and take it all in, and then come to India to actually see them. <laughs> okay. So uh, second one, very interesting and very funny also. <laughs> so this is something that um, a lot of, like a lot of travelers as well as people I've met on my travels in India, when they come to India is, um, do you speak Indian or are you speaking Hindu? Okay, so first I'll, uh, first I'll speak about do you speak Indian, okay? So yes, India is a country, uh, so like, um, when people go to France, people are like, do you speak French? Uh, you know, so people assume that, okay, when you come to India, there must be a language called Indian, which is actually, you know, it's very easy to assume it and it's completely fine. But actually India has 23 official languages. And uh, this is a kind of a thing we say, or as a tour leader, I say this to anyone who comes to India, that every 80 to 100 kilometers, 
languages change right so languages change dialects change and in fact english is the language which binds us together which connects us so some people will have really high standards of english some people will have broken english some people will not be able to speak english that well but we understand each other through english actually <laughs> so hindi and then when we speak about are you speaking hindu first hindu is a religion like hinduism is a religion in india hindi is the um, language and no it is not the national language of india um there are places in india particularly in south india and northeast where they don't really speak hindi so uh, like in some schools in south india they don't even teach hindi so this might come as a shock to some not to many but um, yeah and it changes with geographical locations and as as i said it present like the 23 official languages so even when i have gone to south india and gone to uh, northeast because they have most of their sign boards and everything in english as well as the particular language of that state it becomes easy but a lot of times uh, if you see this ticket this is actually my hand and i'm holding the bus ticket um i had a little bit of a challenge for myself too because i don't actually know malayalam malayalam is the language spoken in kerala so that's where this picture is and if you look closely right below the numbers there is like a language written which is actually malayalam it has a totally different script but right behind it you will see this thing written road which is english so they actually don't have hindi nothing else they just have two languages sometimes they don't even have english so yes it is challenging it is fun but sometimes it gets you know a little crazy <laughs> and the one uh, sign board that you see on the left this is um, uh, taken in delhi um this is of a very famous railway station there you can see four different languages isn't it crazy that how many indian languages we actually have so there's english there is hindi there is uh, urdu and there is punjabi so these are four different languages spoken so yes um we have also we have 1500 dialects so it's not as if languages were not not enough we also have dialect on top of that and then the accents also change so maybe hindi is spoken very differently in delhi it will be spoken very differently in rajasthan or maybe even 50 kilometers away from delhi it will be spoken very different spoken very differently right so yeah uh, yes we we do speak in i for example i speak hindi i speak english i speak french and a bit of punjabi and a bit of urdu so that's why like saying that do you speak indian is not accurate or if you want to see say, uh, say are you speaking hindi you can always ask hindi so hindi is most common in north and central part of india uh, and somewhere in west also some states but yeah every area has their own language uh chris you can move on to the next thank you okay uh, another language oriented uh, question that i get asked uh, and i'll be covering two aspects in this is that uh, first this is a question i think which is very commonly asked to me and also my other colleagues and my co guides so all of us are tour leaders so we interact with travelers from all over the world on a daily basis so a lot of times we get this question where did you learn to speak such good english and our answer is usually in school <laughs> So it's very obvious because uh, all schools in india almost all uh, teach english right so it's widely used it's very important in higher studies you you have to have english and um, on top of that there is a comical generalization and uh, exaggeration that has been made about indian accent that has been brought in by a lot of um, shows tv shows um, Uh, movies that we have this particular indian accent and that is very clear in like if most of you must have seen big bang theory so rajesh kutrupali has that particular accent uh, appu from simpsons who keeps on saying thank you come again so we are not all 711 store owners we are not all taxi drivers uh, education is given top most priority in india uh, not all indians are uneducated and um, like we are actually education is so important that our parents pressurize us till the limit like we go crazy and it's very competitive 
um like it's the the studies are very competitive and that's given top most priority a lot yes of course there are um, it's not uniform literacy rate rates are low in some parts of india but uh, with a population as high as india's uh, any change takes uh, a lot of time so slowly slowly there is hope for uh, change to take place so yes um, another example would be that i am currently um i'm also besides all the things that i said i am also uh, a french and english teacher so i teach french and english so i actually teach english to um uh, one of the kids of my household help and she uh, her english is not so good because she studies in a school where it's the standards of english are not very good so they are not uniform in some schools they'll be very good in some schools they will just not be because of you know not properly trained staff maybe and lack of good governance and all that so uh, i am teaching her english this is my way of making a change because unfortunately english is required at every step so um, you require it for better jobs and everything so yeah so education is given top most priority and english is not spoken the same way like you think that it's an indian accent uh, okay next slide Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, Slumdog Millionaire was a movie which, um, I mean, I am just like totally blown away that how one movie had such a big influence on, uh, like, how it built an entire perception about India. Uh, it's just amazing. Like, I'm saying it in a very good sense because I mean, it was definitely a powerful movie. But not all of India is poor. not all of india is dirty and not all of india is chaotic so as you can see from the pictures while we have chaos like in the bottom low picture we also have peaceful places we also have green and non polluted places um right in the middle of the slide you will see this is a residential neighborhood in delhi um and it's full of uh, actually street art so i would really suggest you guys if you come ever to delhi you should see the street art this is a residential neighborhood and it's so peaceful but at the same time on your on the right that is that is a marketplace as well as a residential area and it's crazy right so this is what i was saying in the beginning also that india's uh, india is so fascinating in the sense of its duality so some people believe that the real india is slum dog millionaire but the real india is a mix of chaos and peace a mix of dirt and cleanliness and green uh, greenery and uh, no pollution and it's a mix of uh, you'll have like you also we also have so many cafes luxury hotels restaurants like so many times when i am leading a tour and when i take them to a cafe a lot of travelers are very surprised that how, how like india has cafes so this is a very surprising thing that i get to hear so yes yeah, slumdog millionaire has shown uh, of course we do have um, uh we have many people who are below the poverty line in india but uh again with the population uh thing uh, changes take place a long time and there is a lack of good governance over the years and then the population is pretty crazy but slowly people are realizing the importance of education they are coming out of this vicious cycle of uh, poverty and begging and as well as we've had really good campaigns for um, uh cl clean india like it's clean india green india so we've had really good ca campaigns it has helped a lot in removing the dirt that, that you would would have seen many years ago and that's what people think that when they come here they see they think that it's it's still we are the still the same but we've changed a lot so yes slumdog millionaire has shown a lot of things which are true but it is accentuated and uh it is no india is not frame by frame copy of slumdog millionaire <laughs> So yes, I would suggest watch other movies too. And when you come here, instead of seeing real India, see dual India because that's the reality of India. Okay, we can uh, switch to the next. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is really fun when somebody asks me. Okay, so um, this is a picture of a very famous cafe, and one of my favorite places to go <laughs> to. Um, yeah. so um 
as i was mentioning before that we do have like hotels cafes and yes there are slums in everything but we have all of these places too uh, thank you i think somebody said dual t yeah yeah i agree <laughs> so yeah uh, this is a very common question that i've asked and i will also be touching the topic of arranged marriages in this which is a very uh, very favorite question of uh, most of the travelers who come to india is like do you guys still have arranged marriages the answer is a uh, it is yes and no so um if you guys have seen i don't know if you've seen indian matchmaking on netflix the very popular show <laughs> so uh, unfortunately most of what they show is true but uh, there is another side to it so what happens is that these shows and the media portrayals they never show the other side of india so uh, arranged marriages have actually uh, do you recommend it or is it badly stereotyped um i have not watched full fully like i am still to watch but uh, i would say that it is not as i said it's not uh, totally untrue also so yeah and yeah it's a land of many paradoxes yes that when something is true the other is also yes so um what happens is that arranged marriages have changed like the concept is still there but the way it is executed has completely changed right earlier in earlier times the women especially had no say like this was years and decades ago when they had no say and they would just get fixed with a with a man and they would just get married but now there's a courtship period the man and the woman get to know each other um, there is definitely a rise in um, women working like the jobs and everything so they are much more aware they are more educated uh, in what they want as as well as of course from the men side also um, like there are men who are 24 25 who get married in india too um but now it has become more of a choice earlier in the arranged marriages was not a choice like i would actually not be totally uh, totally unhappy if my parents fix me with someone like i don't want to get married but and neither are they pressurizing me and i'm glad because i have such for thinking parents but if ever i don't find anyone i don't mind them setting me up with anyone that's how it has become with a lot of my friends and families too but uh, yeah bring coming to the topic yes we do go on dates in india it is a very big culture dating culture we have all all the apps that are present all over the world so as you can see in this picture they are all out relaxing going on dates and uh, this is something which is very funny some parents have an issue with their children dating especially when there is like during college time because that is considered very crucial for their career so in india there is a very big focus on uh, if you date someone it 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 is considered as a distraction to your career and to your uh, studies and you know if you you have a breakup then you're just going to cry and you know <laughs> and just spoil all your studies but uh, that is one thing and then of course there is still some conservative mindset that you cannot you know you uh, dating culture is not there and uh, but mostly like the youth is doesn't really care and they are actually um, bringing a change in the generation gap so they are they are definitely like the youth of india is so powerful they are making their parents understand slowly slowly that it's fine and all and second thing is that even in rural uh, even in rural india and um smaller towns when where dating culture is almost non existent even there people you know they have these farm meetups it's so cute and they meet and they are like you know they have to uh, kind of hide from people and even in big cities and if i give you a contrast even in big cities like delhi there are specific designated places um like um, there are lodi gardens and there are few other places where people actually they are known as lovers gardens because that's where they can escape from their relatives in india relatives are uh, like they love to get in your business so that's where they can you know escape and enjoy their days so yes there's a lot of uh, dating culture and arranged marriages concept has pretty much changed so we do have love marriages and all okay you can move on to the next oh yeah okay so this uh, stereotype is actually true indian food is spicy but the spi the meaning of spicy in india and the meaning of spicy outside india is very different 
okay so um, lastly spicy means something which is flavored with spices but outside india mostly spicy is equivalent to chili hot right so most of the people uh, who come to india they ask this question that you know why is indian food so spicy and why do you put so much chili in it fun fact red chili didn't even come from india it was actually brought in by europeans so uh, we used to use a lot of black pepper uh, in the beginning and that black pepper is mostly hot like heat giving hot as well as a little bit spicy so um this is very uh, it's accurate for, from our meaning that spicy yes we prefer to call indian food flavorful right even as indians we do not like food which only gives the which which only leaves a hot taste in your mouth we absolutely hate that uh, even uh, if you have a home cooked meal uh, like the company where i work for, uh, work for urban adventures we do a home cooked tour uh if you eat the food there it's that is exactly the authentic food you need to eat actually the issue is that outside india rest, like the restaurants the indian restaurants the cooks there are responsible for creating this um, idea of indian food to be spicy because they add lot of chili and everything and that's why you know this misconception has been created so besides that uh, yes and of course there are different uh, india is the land of spices um that's why we had one of the major reasons why people wanted to come here and trade is because of its million spices so in every part of uh, india there are like because we have so many spices in north india there will be different spices used in south india there will be different spices used uh north east india is known for one of the spicy uh, one of the uh, hottest chilies in the world so even when i went to assam which is in northeast india there was a person there who ate the entire chili in one go and i just i was like what are you doing and he had no tears nothing and i i had one little taste and i was crying because it was so hot so that's what i'm saying that not every indian will be able to eat hot food so it keeps on changing from one place to another and biggest reason why indian food is so spicy and flavorful is majorly for its health benefits if you see in the picture that turmeric uh turmeric latte which has become a very big trend nowadays is something that we indians have been doing since almost 50 to 100 years um turmeric latte is literally just milk with turmeric we used to drink it because it's very good for our health uh turmeric heals wounds so we actually don't even really uh, believe a lot in outside allopathic medicines because we love to indians are doctors in themselves <laughs> so we like to fix ourselves with our own spices and everything as well as homeopathy and everything right also we have uh, this is also a very big uh, kind of misconception that indians only eat indian food uh, india is home to all the international cuisines and branches we have mcdonalds we have kfc because a lot of times i've seen this really funny reaction by people when they come here and we pass by a mcdonalds and they're like oh my god there's a mcdonalds here <laughs> so it's very funny then i tell them yes it's all over india of course there are smaller towns and villages where you will not find international cuisine but all cities have uh, different cuisines and as well as so we are not always eating uh, korma butter chicken we have food beyond that as well as one interesting fact about india is that uh, so many communities so many religious communities have come and settled down so they have brought in their own food so how i told about vindaloo vindaloo was actually like uh, this is something that even we have heard from foreigners more like from travelers outside vindaloo is found in goa which is down south so they also have like a little bit of chili food so portuguese actually brought in bread with them so bread we didn't have before the portuguese settled here we've had parsi communities we've had moguls which who were uh, predominantly islamic they've brought biryani so many different things right so yeah that's how uh, i can talk about this particular um, question all that i all i mean i could go on because it's i love food so i think i'll tell chris to move on and yes uh, indian food also we are not all about curries we do have uh, no, curry basically means anything which has um, like liquid right so not all of our food is liquid based it could be dry food too so curry is just one of the many dishes
okay uh, this is another of the uh, assumptions and um, like um, a generalization that's been made is that like a lot of people when they come to india and they spend only like a day and a half or something they say that they don't see many women where are they so this is also partially like you can say this is also yes or no so uh, in india yes there exists a gender disparity um in like in india there is a gender disparity and uh, there is the concept of there are safety concerns for women definitely and there is still uh, a conservative and patriarchal mindset of some people because of which the whole image of india gets tarnished right so just like there are bad guys in like black sheep in a society similarly like everywhere similarly even india has this right so indian women are very much present usually people say this because they don't see many women outside but that's not the case as you can see from the pictures um they are uh, more and more women are uh, they are working across the field uh, different fields so you can see um, uh, you can see uh, people working in like women working in agriculture and farming but also being women entrepreneurs uh they are working in corporate sector development sectors and if i also should mention that india has had a woman president and as well as a woman prime minister some of the countries have not even had both of them so you will you will see women lawyers you will see them in high ceo positions um india's pepsico like the pepsi company in india has had a ceo and she's very famous she was also uh, the top 100 top 10 powerful women in the world so yes it has uh, usually also that maybe you don't see many women also as i told you there are safety concerns conservative mindset and gender disparity but also a lot of women are involved they used to be involved and are still involved in more of like you know, um, healthcare sector education sector so india produces one of the best women uh, teachers as well as healthcare uh, sorry doctors and everything but uh, clearly we have been working across all fields uh, there are we also produce one of the highest numbers of female uh, pilots air force pilots and uh, these are just a few examples of women i have met and women i know on the bottom left that's my sister actually and she um, runs she owns her own uh, home home uh, home bakery so she manages it she bakes it she owns it so uh she does everything and i also am a food photographer and a social media manager for her bakery so yeah then you can see these are women who are picking tea leaves so whoever said that women cannot do hard jobs they actually work side by side and do all the labor intensive things uh when people say i don't see many women where are they they are actually uh they are the unsung warriors and they are handling they are the backbone of our economy so uh, some people still don't get give them recognition and that's why people have this misconception but it is not very true because as you can see and yes women do roam around everywhere and wear whatever they want so you can see they we wear dresses we wear shirts but at the same time you can wear traditional wear also it totally depends on um, you know where you are and that's all so yes we are the we are handling the backbone of the economy so next time you come here spend a little more days and you will see a lot of women okay okay next one oh this one's really fun so uh this is um a picture of a bollywood movie poster on the right and on the left this is a traditional dance form in rajasthan which is in the west part of india so this is a very uh, i i love this question because it's so adorable like can you teach me some typical bollywood moves is because um yes we are the land of bollywood but there are not all indians love bollywood like they don't love the typical bollywood movies and by typical bollywood movies i talk about uh, movies which have 10 minutes long songs and there'll be like 10 songs of that duration and uh, it's not always singing and dancing the reason why i've taken the example of this particular movie is because this this got released i think a year ago and this talks about socio economic issues 
so a lot of movies in bollywood have now changed so earlier it only used to be about those masala uh, mo- moves and masala dance and uh, you know all the uh, the jazzy stuff but it's still there i am not saying that don't worry we still have that kind of bollywood but we again we have another side of bollywood which is more about you know uh, actual real quality acting and direction and different concepts very uh so, like things which are considered taboo in the society people are talking about that in through movies i am a big cinephile i love movies so um another thing about this is that bollywood india is not only bollywood we have a cinema in like for every language so remember i told you that we already have so many languages so we just don't have bollywood we have tollywood we have kollywood and so many things that you know south indian languages or north eastern or even western languages we have um, so yeah bollywood is just one like it it is majorly common in it comes from bombay that's why it's got bollywood in it but uh, yeah and uh, not all dance forms why this question is because this is the picture i've taken that not all dance forms are bollywood so there are uh, every state has a traditional and uh, folk dance of their folk music traditional dance so when you come to india so there is bollywood is not just it's one of the many dance forms and um, yes it is changing plus we uh, like i for if i take my example i don't like typical bollywood movies sometimes okay just for fun uh, because they're really entertaining but yes i prefer watching more uh, like quality movies and uh, yes we do have like a lot of times people have asked if we have netflix and amazon yes we do and uh, we do watch all kinds of like i watch movies in english and french and so many other different languages so we do watch game of thrones we do watch friends we do watch office so yeah we have all of this besides bollywood too that's what it is so next one so these were the main questions that i like most frequently asked uh, and these are a few more uh, that i'll be discussing so uh, first one is how many sarees do you own this is also okay to be frank i just have two sarees okay sarees are uh, yes they are one of the most common traditional uh, attires for women in india but we do have other traditional attires too so we have uh, we have something called lehenga which is like a skirt we have suits which you might have seen some of the women wearing in the previous slides so which is like a long tunic so uh, besides that traditional attire as i mentioned before women and men can wear whatever they want um, in this photo you can see a man he is from northeast india and he is wearing the traditional uh, scarf Uh, of that state where he comes from so he's wearing that so yeah another thing is that uh, the reason why i think most of you must have read the lonely planet books and uh, they scream that in india whenever you go dress conservatively be fully clothed all the time this couldn't be kind of like it, it for me it's pretty inaccurate because when you are here if you go to places of worship or if you go to conservative places that's when you have to be wearing fully clothed you need to cover your knees you need to cover your shoulders both men and women right so elsewhere where it's a little more open minded women wear dresses men can wear shorts whatever you want and sarees are something which uh, kind of like through generations they have dropped like um, but even in my generation a lot of women still do wear sarees but more people who are elder to me they wear sarees on an everyday basis so yes i don't have many sarees but i have tons of other traditional attire because i prefer that but yeah saree is extremely beautiful and like my grandmother used to wear sarees all the time but now she's got sick and tired of it so she just wants to dress up into something else <laughs> she wears whatever she wants to uh next would be is this tourist price um this is something that i would say is basically about ripping off like a lot of people travelers who come to india there is a conception about there is a there is a, a thing about india that every indian is out there to rip you off um mostly unfortunately this is true but uh, like there are uh, you know touts and uh, people who are there to rip you off almost in every country 
um it is changing in india definitely because uh, especially if you come here and take guided tours so that's why i uh, i always suggest whenever i have travelers with me that whenever people want to come to india take guided tours uh, like have authentic information about things um don't just like you you have to be very confident when you are shopping when you are doing anything because as soon as they see a bit of in confidence in you they'll start you know kind of manipulating you but uh, not everyone is out there to rip you off and that has started changing definitely who let the cows out <laughs> so this is something which is um, okay this is true yes this is uh, this is a true stereotype that we have cows everywhere in india but there are some places where i mean when travelers come here they expect cows to be like even when you are in the middle of like a city yes there will be cows but mostly you see cows in smaller towns uh, and then more uh, crowded and chaotic places you will see cow, cow, cows more there so this is basically like a very common question also when people come in and they don't see a cow they're like where are the cows we want to see them <laughs> because this is kind of like the highlight but the reason why there are cows outside is because a lot of times what happens is that um, the reason why cow is considered holy is because we are an agro based economy agriculture we are a farmers country so cows are considered to be our mother in the sense because they provide the basic necessities of milk uh, they uh, they provide um, so many other things which are required they are the biggest provider of cattle for us so that is why you see them but the reason you see them on the streets is because a lot of times when people are transporting uh when uh, people coming from rural towns come to city you know in search for jobs and everything sometimes cows wander off on their own they have a mind of their own so they just leave so sometimes they leave and they roam around the streets and then the owners are looking for them and uh many a times some farmers abandon them also they leave them because uh in india the cows the amount of milk that they give is not as high as outside so they give very little milk so that's why they have to be like sometimes they leave them to be they are like okay now you know you can be on your own so yes you will see cows but not everywhere um this is one question another question that i get i have been asked and a few of my uh, co guides have been asked is where does your water come from uh this is a very fascinating question to me because i have i wasn't able to understand what the what people have meant by this but they actually were concerned that you know do we all drink tap water and you know does because tap water is all uh, they don't think we have the system of uh, uh, basically uh, reverse osmosis and we don't have air purify uh, water purifiers with us right so just like any other city just like any any other country our water uh, is also goes through treatment plants we have the biggest sources of uh, uh, rivers like we have such big river systems as you all, all know and uh, glacial melt as well as ground water we have big supply of ground water but everything goes through treatment plants and yes uh, we also have air, uh, water purifiers in every house so yes we don't our water comes from the same place where every every other place it comes from so yeah that's it and this one's my like i think this is like the funniest and i love it is that i can't survive in india without the art of sport so this basically means like a lot of people think that in india we don't have the concept of western toilet but that's not the case um we all even in uh, like even in smaller towns now even in villages there are some places where you have both indian toilets as well as western toilet so guys you can survive in india even if you don't know how to squat don't worry <laughs> okay so that's about it um and now we'll move on to the questions that was awesome uh, i'm Thank going to so much, yeah. uh did i stop my screen share okay i'm going to start looking through the questions we had a couple in here uh so much should have written down is what it should have done uh 
go down the bottom. Uh, if you have a question, uh, just type your question into the chat. Uh, here's one. Um, somebody was wondering about the uh, female only cars on the metro or train. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yes, we do have. Uh, so in Delhi, there is women only travel uh, in Delhi metro. It's been there since a lot of years now. Um, that was majorly to do to make women more, feel more comfortable as well as for the safety concerns. And it is a big success. So anything else you would want to know? Yes, there is. It is definitely there. But uh, a lot of women like me, we feel very comfortable traveling both in women only as well as gender. A lot of times what happens is women only, you don't get to. So I move on to the general uh, compartments because almost all men get up. They're like, okay, you, you can. So it's nice. You get your own uh, um, privilege. <laughs> Uh, we had another question about uh, when do you think it will be possible for people to visit again? Oh, mm, I think nobody knows the answer to that right now. <laughs> it's a, um, it's a, uh, I, I myself don't know how certain it is, but um, because international, um, international travel has opened, but there are uh, a lot of restrictions and everything, a lot of rules. But uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, even I was just about to say that hopefully next year, I, I hope it opens because there was a friend of mine who is in Australia and she might be, she was saying that she's booking for next year, May, but you know how the situation is now. Anything can change, uh, like it, it can change in any day, right? It, within a few hours, things are changing. But I really hope that after my presentation, I think that's why she asked or whoever asked that uh, when can we visit India because I think I kind of transported you guys and I'm, I'm happy to know that that I have made more people come to come to India and I'll be happy to take you guys like because I, I am a guide so I would love to show you Delhi as well as all of India so yeah hope to see you um uh, and our right now is there any domestic travel going on yes domestic travel is fully open. I actually just came back from the mountains four days ago. So yes, it is open. Uh, public transport is still not open completely. And even mm -hmm. if it is open, there are like limited people who are allowed to book. Um, yes, domestic travel is open. There are no restrictions, except there are some, some, uh, some states which require home quarantine. And right. but in the mountains, there's nothing you just need to register on the website and everything for an e pass. So there are some things like that. Uh, and Tracy had a question, uh, wondering if you could talk a little bit about meditation culture. That's why she's interested in going. Okay, okay. Uh, so meditation is um, a part of yoga, right? So this was another thing that we can talk about is that um, actually, the concept of yoga has also been skewed a lot and it has been misappropriated a lot outside India. Uh, yoga is not just about um, exercising and all that. It's actually about connecting with yourself with the art of breathing as well as so many different other things. Um, it's, it's a great, uh, it's very good for your health, of course. So um, meditation culture, there is, there is definitely, we, we do have a lot of uh, institutions as well as even in schools, uh, taking yoga is compulsory for the for some classes. Yeah, so which which I believe is excellent. It should be there in your curriculum. It is that uh, even some people in India have kind of um, like they don't understand the concept of yoga that much. So they have, they go according to the Western influences. So we do have meditation and yoga centers in north, in south, uh, majorly like the best meditation centers. So whoever asks, you can actually contact me. Um, she can, whatever more, anything more that you need to ask. Uh, I think I'll give my email ID or something and then you can. Yeah, you can everyone, um, uh, everyone got an email just before this started and it had all your contact okay. information. So that has yeah. all our social media. If you do have more follow-ups, um, we'll take yeah. Any, one. Yeah. Uh, did I answer your question? Um, I'm not sure if I did. Anything else you would like to know about the meditation culture? Uh, in the meantime, we'll, we'll jump to the next question. Uh, what are some of your favorite places and why? 
in india some of my fav- oh okay this is a very tough question um i have a favorite place almost in, like i told you india is so diverse and it has so many terrains and landscapes and different climates and everything um because i like delhi is my hometown so um i love the fact that delhi is close to everywhere like uh, i we i literally just had to take a road trip 6 to 7 hours and i was in the mountains um even south you can just take a train or a flight and you are right there so in south i love kerala maybe that's why i chose my cover picture also of kerala but um there's also like a lot of people know about goa i think uh, as the town of beaches but uh, kerala has beautiful pristine beaches uh, also as well as backwaters as well as hill stations near it so uh, yeah that would be it then in north i can't choose because i love himalayas so every every mountain range every place there because it's different every town is different uh, north east because i recently visited assam i would definitely tell people to go there because it is home to uh, one of the national uh, like one of the unesco national parks of india national parks are also really uh, big in india so that's where you find the uh, famous and popular one horned rhinoceros which i didn't get to see unfortunately and uh, in west it has to be rajasthan uh, again rajasthan is a mini country in its own so i am still left to see a lot of places there but uh, mostly i've seen it so i love it again i can't really choose and uh, central india is still yet to i'm still yet to properly explore it so i wouldn't really comment on it right now but yeah i just i actually can't pinpoint any destination i just love all of them no that's i think that gives us everyone tons of things to to look up yeah and, yes uh, and as i the, said that slide also that there's much more than taj mahal so you must have seen all the different pictures uh, so it would have given you an idea of how there are so many different landscapes it's crazy that's why i was saying that i'm still left to explore india so much that even if i have explored most of it there's always something new which pops up and we'll take one last question uh from debbie uh debbie was wondering about your own tours can you talk about your the tours that you run and and what those are like so um right now i work with uh, like as a local guide i work with urban adventures so i uh, i lead tours in delhi um i was supposed to start with intrepid which is all over india but uh, because of the pandemic my first tour got canned unfortunately and uh, i lead my independent tours currently in delhi but uh, like anybody who contacts me i design a tour for them uh, anywhere in delhi but i also curate like i also curate experiences all over india so uh, anybody who like i will be happy to design an itinerary and everything and take you with it and i think that would be better talked about uh, on a personal basis as well as an email so i hope that's okay of course yeah yeah no that's great yeah. so yeah as i mentioned everywhere uh, earlier if you want to if you have more questions um you should have gotten an email earlier uh with uh all of the social media contacts email and all that it's also on the nomadic network site um so if anybody does have follow ups you can hop on there um uh but yeah that's i think we'll wrap up there um i want to thank everyone for for tuning in today Uh it's always great to talk about travel and get inspired. We can't quite go anywhere yet, but I think it's given us all uh a lot of ideas and inspiration. I'm just going to share my screen for one quick second before we hit the road. Whoops. Uh go to another slide. So we do have for those interested more events coming up this week. Uh, about other destinations we've got portugal on the map we've got the us coming up one on diving for anyone who's interested in 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 that i've only been diving once and it was uh amazing and terrifying at the same time uh we've got one about the olympics coming up so all kinds of awesome content we've got these planned out all the way into next year so if you want to uh sign up for one of those or see what's coming you can just head on over to the nomadicnetwork.com/events. Uh we've got we've got more coming up all the time. Tons of awesome stuff there. 
for anyone interested uh, in watching the replays of any of these or this chat we had today, uh, we share our replays on Patreon, as I mentioned. Tons of free story, exclusive stories. I mean, I've worked for Matt for five years and he shares stories that even I didn't know about. So there's lots of cool stuff there. Uh, you get to comment on posts before they go up on the blog. So lots of perks there, including the replays for anyone interested and able to support us that way. No obligation, of course. Uh, same with uh, PayPal. If you'd like to just make a one-time donation, um, we'd be more than grateful for that support. Uh, but of course, these are free. All of them are free. So I hope to see you folks at more of these in the future, if you can make it. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank our wonderful host today. I see a bunch of comments. I'm just going to pop in. Yeah. Uh, uh, I also wanted to add something right after you. You can go ahead. I'll also add something later. Oh, uh, no, I was just going to say thank you so much for, for sharing. I think with everyone trapped at home, it was nice to sort of escape uh, escape to India for a little bit, especially for those like me who are in uh, colder and rainier parts of the world. Um, so I'm personally more excited to to plan a trip once once uh, the virus ends, hopefully soon. But thank you so much. I think we all learned learned a lot and got uh, some lovely inspiration today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris, and thank you all for signing up and coming and joining me. It means a lot. Um, also, um, I would really like to thank the uh, Nomadic Network again for calling me to present. And I would just like to leave it on a happy note that we have our, you know, we have our uh, challenges, but there is hope to change. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. So we are applying that. And I'm really glad that through this presentation, I could actually make you like i could actually transport you to india and i really cannot wait for you guys to come here and guide you i would love to lead all of you unfortunately even i don't have the answer to when uh, travel would really open in india i wish i did but hoping next year march may i don't know maybe but yeah i hope i answered all your questions and i hope it was fun because that was my main idea that you guys should have fun and get transported to india as much as you could so thank yeah, you so no, much. Thank you it so was much. great. Thank you so much. Thanks Dhanya. everyone for coming. Dhanyavad and, uh, and namaste. All right. Namaste. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.